Welcome to my channel where the guys for photography. Today we are inside dark table and we are going to deal with this image. Now this image has a few challenges. Uh, we have a lot of whites or highlights and the separation between the midtones and the shadows are not too far far away. So if we lift the midtones, we are probably going to lift the shadows and vice versa anyway uh, for this image i was thinking maybe we should do sort of a lightroom workflow or do it as if we were inside lightroom uh, this is for any new dark table users and uh, so translating your lightroom room workflow into dark table might be challenging because you won't know what modules will do what so uh, that's something i'm going to try and uh, highlight today so let's just get started what well, the first thing i do this is my lightroom workflow so the first thing i would do in lightroom would be to change the white balance and the white balance inside dark table, as long as you're using a scene referred workflow, is to be changed under color calibration by going to the color tab. And what I usually try is to hit the droplet tool. This will try and analyze the image and pick the correct white balance. But for this image, I know that it will push everything over to the blues but i want to warm it up just a little bit but let's just hit the droplet tool yeah it did push it over to the blues yeah let's keep it like that but if i wanted to warm it up i would just go for temp there and just pull that up and warm it up like this so I would probably go for something like that. If we hit reset again. Now, if we hit the droplet tool, you can see that uh, it changes the white balance, but suddenly the sliders have changed. So uh, this is what we originally had for sliders. And we did hit the droplet tool and suddenly it says chroma and hue here. Uh, to warm it up, if we want to do that, we actually need to move to the left side. And if we want it colder, we would move it to the right side. So let's hit reset again. And let's just warm it up a little bit. Now we have other features inside the color calibration module as well. Uh, we have the RGB channels. We have colorfulness brightness and gray so there's a lot of stuff you can do inside this color uh, inside this module we will come back to this module and change some stuff later but first thing i wanted to do was to set the white balance typically after setting the white balance i will go and change the exposure and we can hit the droplet tool for that as well this will analyze the image and try and set the best exposure value. And it did a good job. Uh, let's go inside and change the blacks and whites. Uh, so that's done under the filmic RGB module. And you can auto tune levels, auto tune the blacks and the whites. And if we hit this button uh, to show clipping uh, if we are clipping the highlights or crushing the blacks if i hit this droplet tool now we are probably going to clip the highlights and crush some blacks but that's fine we can adjust that by using the white relative exposure and the black relative exposure sliders so if I go up on the whites here, I'm removing the clipping warning or the clipping. And if I go up on the 
black relative exposure. I'm removing uh, the crushing of the blacks. I'm lifting the blacks, basically. The next thing I will typically do is to go and change the contrast. So if we go under look under filmic RGB, we can introduce more contrast or we can even drop the contrast some. And for this image, I'm just going to drop the contrast ever so slightly. And that's fine. So let's move to uh, the highlights and shadows. So we go to the color tab and color balance RGB. And if you look under perceptual brilliance grading, we can adjust the light. So I can introduce more lights. I can drop the lights and I can lift the shadows. I can drop the shadows and the same with the midtones and the highlights. So let's lift the shadows slightly to maybe somewhere around there and to try and separate the darkest of the shadows and the midtones a little bit. I'm going to try and drop the midtones slightly. This will uh, uh, introduce some more contrast. And I'm just going to drop uh, the highlights just a little bit. And we can introduce some vibrance to the scene. So let's go for global vibrance. And I think that's fine. Let's uh, introduce some uh, saturation. So you can do global saturation. So that will uh, introduce a saturation in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Or you can actually do it separately. So I'm going to introduce a saturation in the shadows, a little bit in the midtones, and a little bit in the highlights. And let's see, this is without the color balance RGB module. And this is with the color balance RGB module. And you can see it's a bit flat, but we are going to try and fix that now. Now in uh, Lightroom, I typically use the haze removal tool a lot, even though even if I'm uh, developing images without haze, I use the haze removal because it introduces contrast and it did an excellent job. If you think uh, it's introducing too much contrast, you can go down on the string or you can hit the pencil tool and go down on the opacity. So I would probably go down to somewhere around there. Okay, so the next thing I would do is probably to do some clarity. Now, I don't typically like to introduce clarity to the sky, so we can try and introduce clarity without doing that. So if we go for this tab, the effect tab, and contrast equalizer, under here you have a preset called clarity. Uh, so it introduces, as you can see, a pretty strong effect and it's starting to crush our blacks. But we can go down on it by just sliding it down a bit or we can introduce it again. And simply go for the pencil and the opacity again. So something like that for now. So that's the clarity preset. Now I think we are a bit too dark. So I'm going to go into exposure again and just lift it. 
to somewhere around there maybe yeah okay so that's fine let's go into color balance rgb again and just play around with the sliders under perceptual brilliance grading and that's fine so now before doing anything else i would typically do the crop and for this image i'm thinking maybe doing a two by one crop yeah that's fine for this image and maybe something like this maybe creep in just a bit yeah let's try that okay so that works and we can for example add a simple frame so if I type framing and go in there and change uh, border size to I like 3% so something like that and if we go into the correction tab we can do denoise and lens correction now maybe you would want to have a vignette and uh, typically you can go and create a new instance of exposure so you can do that by right clicking these squares and you can drop the exposure to around where you want it so say may, maybe something like that and if you hit the pencil there and you hit this add ellipse you can shape, shape that ellipse into pretty much how you would like to have it and I want to creep in on this part just a bit and if I hold down the shift key and scroll up or down I can change the feather of this ellipse so if I go all the way down here you can see that I'm changing the feather quite a bit and we can go up uh, we need to invert this mask because we are now applying it in the center uh, if we show the mask you can see how the mask is uh, applied if we hit this one this is the invert uh, what you would call invert inside lightroom and now the mask is inverted it didn't show but uh, it is you can see if we hit the on off okay so that's fine that's a decent vignette now maybe i want to brighten this house i think this is the our focal point so maybe I want to go in and create a new instance of color balance RGB and just hit the squares and right click with mouse. And let's say I want to go up a bit on the global brilliance and a bit on the shadows to something like this and let's go into parametric mask now first let's go into an um, ellipse and i'm just gonna try and see if we do something like this and go down quite heavily on the feathering something like that maybe let's see this is without and this is with the color balance rgb and i think that works uh, pretty good actually we can introduce even more feathering and maybe go up on the mid tones as well and let's see something like that all right uh, i think i want some more vibrance actually some global vibrance 
and some more saturation in the highlights. Let's go into our clarity. That's the contrast equalizer. And let's go up on the opacity again to something like that. And let's sharpen this image. So if you go to diffuse or sharpen, I tend to use a preset here because this module is uh, really complex. So I used the preset for uh, lens blur and I try with medium. And yeah, that seems to be great. All right, so let's take a snapshot here. Uh, it should be here. Take snapshot. Let's go up. And let's have a look. Okay, so this is before and this is after. Before and after. And I can see that I should probably drop the exposure just a little bit. It's a bit bright. Yeah, something like that maybe. And into color balance. And just go up a bit on the midtones and up some more on the shadows. Yeah, that's fine. That's actually pretty nice. Okay, so this is where we are at and uh, this is where we started. So I think that's a pretty good uh, conversion. Now we have done this image using sort of the Lightroom workflow. So this is how you would typically uh, do a Lightroom workflow inside uh, Darktable. And if you want to expand on it, you can, for example, do color equalizer. And let's say you want to change some of these tonings. And if you go to hue, you can try and uh, change the hue for something more purplish, magenta. So something like that. Introduce some more saturation. And maybe extend it a bit. And you could even drop the brightness. Maybe you think this uh, red roofing is too dark. You can try and put the pointer over here. Let's see. Okay, so that's all the way out here. You can try and go up. And that brightens the roof here and here a bit. So let's see now. So again, this is where we started and this is where we ended up. So it's a pretty good conversion and it's done by using the Lightroom workflow. So this is how you do it. This is how you translate your Lightroom workflow into a dark table workflow. So I think that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want to watch more from me, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again. Goodbye.